Hello, it's time for a coding challenge in processing, which is a Java-based thing. You can find more about it at processing.org. I am going to attempt to create something that looks like this, otherwise known as a sand pile. So first, thank you very much to coding train viewer Simon Tiger, who uh, suggested this on January 26. Uh, there is a nice little discussion here, a link to the number file video um, that I uh, just watched earlier this morning. Now here's the thing, I highly encourage you, if you want, to pause right now and go and watch the sand piles. I keep wanting to say sand file because it's number file and sand pile, but anyway, you go and watch that video right now to find out more about the mathematics of sand piles. I'm going to kind of skip all that and go cut right to the chase and just look at the basic idea and then what happens when we take that idea and turn it into color in a processing sketch. So let me um, come over here and talk to you about the basic idea. So first of all, this video is going to, the code that I'm going to write, uh, I think, I haven't written it yet, so is going to look a lot like the game of life or maybe um, even like a blur, image processing blur algorithm. Because what I'm going to do with this sand pile algorithm is look at a two-dimensional space divided into cells. And the core sort of the, the core building block here that I need to look at just in the simplest way is a three by three grid. So ultimately, I'm going to take this algorithm and apply it to a processing sketch that might be something like 600 by 600 pixels, and I'm gonna let this sand piles thing happen all throughout this window and color it, but what, is, what actually needs to happen, I can reduce and describe to you in terms of just this three by three grid. Okay, so why is it called sand pile? Well, the idea is that if I have this grid here, I might dribble sand on it, and I might sort of have a few pieces of sand, like there might be two pieces of sand here, and three pieces of sand here, and eight, uh, six pieces of sand here, one there, none there, none there, three there, uh, five there, and one there, right? So this idea is that each cell has a certain amount of sand in it, but there is a limit, there is a limit and in some sense, it's kind of arbitrary, but uh, it works out nicely with this number. The limit is four, meaning it can't actually really is three. The maximum amount of sand that any one of these cells can have in it is three pieces. So this begs the question, what happens if I dribble a lot and put, say, 100 pieces of sand in that spot right there? Well, let's look at it this way. Let's say this is the initial starting point of this sand pile. There are four pieces of sand right here and no pieces of sand anywhere else. What happens is this becomes this cell, which has four pieces of sand, loses all of its sand, it topples, and the sand falls onto its neighbors. One piece in each direction. Just the neighbors to the right, the left, the top, the bottom. Now I'm curious, after you watch this video and you look at my code and maybe you implement it yourself, well what happens if you change that number of the max to three? What happens if you let the sand fall in different ways? All sorts of possibilities, but I'm going to follow the core sand pile algorithm, the one described in the number file video. Okay, so now it looks like this. Zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Oh no, no, sorry. <laughs> one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. So all four pieces left the center spot and they went up to the right. Now, I could have a more complex scenario. For example, I could have two, three, zero, zero, four, uh, two, three, zero, zero. If this is the case, what happens here is the same sort of thing in that this, this remains a two, this now becomes a four, this remains a zero, this now becomes a one, this becomes a zero, this becomes a three, this stays a three, this becomes a one, and this stays a zero. Now I have this, and so on and so forth. All of a sudden, now this topples. So this goes out, and this becomes a one, and this becomes a three, and this becomes a one, and this becomes a zero, and this other piece of sand just sort of leaves the universe here. Now it's interesting if we think of this as an infinite space, or if we think of it maybe as it, a torus where it like wraps around to the other side. There's all sorts of kind of weird possibilities we could try, but ultimately the core idea is that any cell that has more than three pieces of sand 
loses four pieces, those go out to the neighbor. So, for example, with this 100, what ha would happen here is this would become 96, and we would add one to each of the neighbors. Then the next generation, this would become 92. So, uh, and I'm talking about generations because I'm going to, on one hand, we could just look at the end result, but I'm going to watch it as an animation. Okay, that's an explanation. I am now going to go and write the code. I took way too long explaining that. I wanted it to be much shorter, but such is life. All right, so let's see. Do we think we could get some sort of result like this? I don't know. Maybe. Let's try. So I'm going to close the browser. I've got processing open here. Uh, all I need is a setup function uh, and a draw function. And then I need, I need a two, I want to use a two-dimensional array. <laughs> I want to use a two-dimensional array to describe the sand piles that are part of this uh, processing window that I'm going to draw into. So uh, I'm going to call that uh, sand piles. Then I'm going to create, I'm going to just start with like a 200 by 200 window. Um, that'll sort of be simple. And I'm going to, it'll be interesting to think about the resolution or like sort of the size of each cell on this grid, but I'm just going to have each cell be one pixel. I think it's an easy way for me to work. Um, and then so I need to say sand piles is a new array uh, with uh, width, new two-dimensional array with width and height spaces in it. Okay, now, uh, then what I need to do is in draw, um, let's write a function to uh, render. And to render, I'm going to say load pixels, update pixels. And I am going to loop through every single spot, every single pile of sand, every X and every Y. Uh, and I am going to say, uh, now, so what do I need to do? All right, let's, <laughs> so how, might, how, much, how, many, how much sand is there? I'm gonna say int num equals sand piles index X index Y. Then, according to that, I need to set a pixel. Now the pixels aren't in a two-dimensional array, they're in a one-dimensional array. I have feel like I'm Sisyphus who just goes up the hill to mention about this formula from a one-dimensional array to two-dimensional array to a one-dimensional array. I've done this countless times, but x plus y times width, that's going to give me the unique integer index of the pixel associated with the xy coordinate. Then I just need to give that some sort of color, and so let's call that col. Now, I want the color to be according to the number of, uh, the color to be according to the, how much sand there is. So we can see here in the number file video, zero grains, one grain, two grains, three grains. These are nice colors. I'm not good with color, somebody help me. I'm gonna be very arbitrary about this right now, and I'm gonna say uh, color, color equals uh, white. And then, of course, um, you're going to all want to tell me about how I should use a switch statement, but I'm just going to say if there are zero grains of sand, it should be black. If there's one grain of sand, uh, it should be uh, pink. And um, if there are two, it'll be some other color. And if there are three, and if someone in the Slack group wants to give me a color scheme, I will take it. Uh, there, it will be uh, this color. So let's, I don't know, let's do this, and then let's do this. There we go. Okay, so now, and then if in draw I call render, what we should see right now is, whoops, oh, let's save this. Yeah, let's save this, good idea. Uh, let's call this sand piles. Um, if I run this, we should see a black window, right? Because the, the sand piles were initialized with all uh, zeros. I'm getting some color suggestions from the chat. I will come back uh, and, and, and use those in a little bit. Okay, now, if I were to say sand piles, let's, let's so the, one, the way that image was generated in the number file video, not to spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you what happens at the end of the number file video, um, is that just a lot of sand is dropped in the middle. So what happens we just drop a huge amount of sand in the middle and watch it topple, 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 ripple, 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 ripple
Um, and so I'm going to say, I'm going to just have the middle be with the sort of spot that's width divided by two, height divided by two, and I'm going to put, um, right now I'm just going to put four, <laughs> four uh, pieces of grains of sand there. So let's run this again. And, uh, whoops, let's run this again, and we should see, there it is. Now I have a white dot in the center there because there are four grains of sand. So the next thing we need to do is figure out the topple algorithm. <laughs> topple, what happens when the sand pile topples? Well, if it's greater than four, pass out, uh, topple, pass one grain of sand, top, left, right, bottom, and then subtract four. So the first thing I need to do is probably create a, so if this is my current sand pile, what I want to do is create kind of like the next pile. And the next pile is going to start with all zeros in it. And then uh, if a cell doesn't have four, like if, if a cell has less than four, then it can have that same number in the next pile. And then, so I could go and copy over everything that's less than four. And then after that, I could topple things. So um, I, I could probably do this in one pass, but I think doing it in two passes will work. That's the way I'm thinking about it right now. I don't know if you're following me, but I, you might follow me when I'm writing the code. So let's, let's come back and do that now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a function called topple. Um, and I'm going to say uh, int next piles is also a, just a blank array. And then I am going to do this same for loop to look at every single spot. I'm gonna do this twice. I'm not sure if this is necessary, but it's the way that I'm thinking about it right now. I'm gonna say, okay, int num equals, I need this again. How many are in that spot? And if num is less than four, then uh, next piles x, y is just equal to uh, sand piles x, why? So this is me copying over every single pile of sand that doesn't need to be toppled. Then what I'll do afterwards is I'll do this exact same loop again, but if the number is greater than or equal to four, um, greater than or equal to four, then next piles will equal what it currently was minus four. So subtract those four. And then all of the neighbors, x plus one, x plus one, x minus one, y plus one, and y minus one will each increase by one. So I need to, Additively, because there could be multiple piles with more than four on different sides, need to be able to add everything together. So I think if I just take the current uh, amount of sand, subtract four, and then send the, each, each of those four grains of sand out to each of the four neighbors, this should be good. And then at the end, the sand piles is now next piles. So let's take a look at this. What do I see now? Oh, I have to call that function. <laughs> so I want to render in draw, I want to render then topple. And let's actually set the frame rate to one because maybe uh, I can see it. Look at that. So look at that. I toppled that center cell, right? It was white the first frame and then now it has, each one of those neighbors just has one uh, pile of sand, one grain of sand. And that should be, if I look at the render function, um, one grain of sand is pink. Aha, okay, oh, I think we're done. <laughs> we're actually kind of done. I had to deal with the edge cases and lots of other stuff, but let's actually, now, now we could just do something goofy. We're gonna be like, I don't know, let's just add 400 things of sand. Oh, now I'm still at one frame per second. So looking at this, we can kind of watch what it's doing. Uh, the sand is toppling and each of the cells is coloring. Now, it probably would be good for me to have created a version of this that was kind of zoomed in so you can see. Uh, it's, I'm zooming in using like a software zoom, so it's sort of blurring each one of these pixels. But I might as well just kind of go for it, take out this frame rate one, and just watch it go. So now we can see this is what's happening now. All of that sand, ooh, and it finished. So it toppled and got done. So we need more sand.
How much sand can I put in? How about that much? There we go. Okay, so I let this run for a little bit, and while I have to admit I picked some like kind of horrendous colors, and it, and it is doing something kind of beautiful and interesting and weird, it's not correct. And the chat pointed out to me that this should have fourfold symmetry, right? There's no reason why, and, and it, it has this like nice symmetric quality to it, but it's not the right kind of symmetry. All right, so what is the problem? And it did take me a little bit of time to think about this. Um, and so the problem is, I believe, is here. This is a very dangerous thing that I'm doing. The point of next piles is that I always want next piles to accumulate the sand from previous. That's why I'm copying over things that are less than four and then adding up things that when they're toppled. And I also need to subtract the four from the thing that was toppled. But I'm not just subtracting the four, I'm overwriting anything that was there before. So it could be that two cells with more than four are near next to each other, and so one gets one from the other, but then I just, but I don't, but I, then, then as soon as I get to the next cell, I don't take that into consideration more. So this should actually be adding, and this, by the way, just can be the current amount, which is num. So I need to add num minus four. So whatever it was before, I want to put in that pile all of the sand except for the four that are going out to the neighbors. And I believe that if I run this, um, we should see it be much more symmetrical. And you can see that already. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to do two more things. And there's so much you could do with this that I'm not going to do. I'm going to let you do it. I'm at least going to pick some different colors. And I'm going to speed up the animation to see... Um, uh, to be able to get to the end result a little bit more quickly. All right, Alka in the uh, patron sponsor group uh, in Slack has uh, some rainbow color suggestions for me. So let's put those in. Where are they? Color, uh, this first color is 25500. The next color is 25500. The next color is 0185. 63, the next color is 0, 104, uh, 255, and the last color is 122, uh, 0, 229. I probably could use HSB color or have the colors change over time. There's so many things I could do, but I'm just going to just show you that the colors that you pick make a difference here. Um, so here we go. There's our nice uh, rainbow colors. Now, what I want to do is I want to see the end result a bit more quickly. Well, I mean, one thing that I could do is just sit here and wait. And I could, if you're watching the recorded version of this, I'll speed up the video to get to the end. But just for the, the sake of um, um, showing you how I could uh, see it more quickly is I am going to, uh, all I need to do is call topple multiple times each time through draw. So I'm going to write an extra loop in here. Like if I just say call topple 10 times and run it, we can see here that you can see it looks as if it's going faster. It's not actually going faster, just animating faster. Well, uh, it's doing 10, sorry, it's doing 10 updates per frame of animation. Let's do 1,000. There we go. And I'm not so sure about these colors. <laughs> um, oh, and then let's, uh, and of course, we, we got an array out of bounds exception. So let's fix that. Um, so we need to figure out, so we, we need to say like as long as x plus 1 is less than width and uh, as long as x minus 1 is greater than, is greater than negative 1, I guess I could say greater than or equal to 0. Uh, and then this one I want to say if y plus, y plus 1 is less than height and this one, and by the way I'm not using any, I, I never do this, but and I probably should just put the curly brackets in there. But if you only ever have one line of code that comes after an if statement, the curly brackets can be assumed for just that one line. And then I'm going to say uh, if y, uh, y uh, minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So this will at least now fix the edge problem. Let's let it go as far as it can go. This is crazy. Okay, first of all, um, the chat is telling me I got the wrong colors. <laughs> Second is 255, 255, 0. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I had the wrong colors. 
Oh, there we go. That's nicer. Oh, much prettier. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, the bit rate's going to be a disaster on these YouTube videos. Uh, but this is quite lovely. So the next thing I want to do is just finish this off by saying like 800 by 800 and run it. Oh, so slow. Probably some kind of magical shader thing could make it happen faster. Um, let's at least, I want it to animate a little faster. So let's, um, let's topple it only 100 times per frame. And I'm going to just work on my email and some other stuff for a little bit. And then I'll be back when this gets a little further along. All right, it's taking a really long time to render, so I think that's good enough for this coding challenge. There you go, sand piles in processing. I cannot wait to see what people make to this. this you, you, could, we, you could start to do stuff where you drop the sand, you could pick your own color schemes, you could have the colors change over time, you could render something out to a giant poster and print it. I don't know, there's so many possibilities. If you watch the number file video, you'll probably get more ideas. Thank you for watching this coding challenge, uh, and see you in a future one on something else. Bye.